Okay, our next topic is uh, Wine's Law. And we've, we already looked at this law when we were looking back at the climate change issue. Um, and that is that the type of light, the type of radiation that is released by a, a star, or really any object for that matter, is dependent largely on its temperature. And so as the temperature increases, you find that two things occur. So let's start with the graph on the left. First of all, as the temperature increases, one of the, the obvious things, we're looking at a temperature here of 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, and 6,000 degrees. So one thing that you find is that the peak is getting higher, right? And that should make a lot of sense, right? We expect that the intensity, intensity is, is, is essentially similar to the, the power or the luminosity. Um, we find that the amount of power or the number of joules per second that are coming off the object is much higher as we get to a higher temperature, right? And it's very heavily dependent on the temperature. So as that temperature increases, we really see this thing, this graph, spike up very dramatically, right? Remember, it's a T to the fourth dependence. Um, number two, second thing that we find is that as we increase the temperature, the peak is moving to, in this graph, to the left, meaning that the wavelength is getting shorter and shorter. For example, red having the longest wavelength and violet or blue having the, long, the shortest wavelength. So the peak at 3,000 degrees is somewhere down here um, in the infrared portion of the spectrum. If we go up to 4,000 degrees, then the peak just makes it into the red portion of the spectrum. At 5,000 degrees, we find that the peak is somewhere around the orange portion of the spectrum. At 6,000, we find the peak is just getting into the blue portion of the spectrum. Our sun is about 5,800 degrees, so we peak somewhere here at the edge of the green portion of the, of the spectrum. Now, you notice that this is 200. Now, if we shrink this down and put the 200 here, Here's what 6,000, so this 6,000 line is the same as this 6,000 line. We've just sort of shrunk the graph down so we can look at really high temperature stars. Well, as we get to 7,500 degrees, we actually leave the visible portion of the spectrum. More than 7,500 degrees, the peak wavelength that is released by that particular object will not be in the visible portion of the spectrum. Similarly, as we get down below about 4,000 degrees, we find that the peak wavelength is no longer in the visible portion. At 4,000, it's below the red or infrared, and at 7,500 or higher, we find that it's beyond the violet or in the ultraviolet portion of the spectrum. So this 9,000 degree star actually peaks in a form of light known as ultraviolet. However, if you just real quickly take a look at the graphs, you'll notice a couple of things. First of all, a very low temperature star gives off a lot more of the red, for example, let's look at the 4000, gives off a lot more of the red than it gives off of the blue. This is going to give this star sort of a reddish orange color. In the case of the 5000 degree star, you'll notice that it gives off roughly equal amounts of everything, but a little more in the green and the yellow. These stars are going to take on a yellowish white appearance. As we go to the very high temperature stars, you'll notice that they give off a lot more of the blue end of the spectrum than they do of the red end of the spectrum, and so therefore these stars are going to take on a bluish appearance. So blue stars will appear to be very hot, extremely hot stars. The yellowish white stars are kind of middle temp, middle of the road temperature, and the red and orange stars are the low temperature stars. So that's one of the things that you can get from this graph. Now, we've actually already looked at this formula before, but there is a specific formula, and this is what Wine's Law um, actually tells us, and that is a way to calculate the exact temperature. So lambda naught t is equal to a constant, and that constant is 2.90 times 10 to the minus 3. Now, of course, this is in meters, the wavelength, temperature in Kelvin, so that gives us units of Kelvin meters. Now, in a real simple sense, lambda naught t is equal to a constant. So therefore, for example, if I increase the temperature, what will I find? I will find that the wavelength decreases. And that's what we see in the graph. As the temperature is getting hotter, we see the peak, first of all, over to the right of the spectrum, of the visible spectrum, then just into the edge of it, moving more and more leftward. We're on the left side of the visible portion of the spectrum. That's down here, that's at 6,000 degrees. As we get hotter, we shift even more and more and more to the left. So what's happening to our wavelength? We're getting smaller and smaller and smaller wavelengths. Okay, so for example, we know the 
peak wavelength, and this is example question four on page, uh, I'm sorry, example question five, my mistake, on page 497 to 498, we know that the peak wavelength for the sun is about 5.0 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. Double check that. Um, and so then this would allow us to therefore calculate the temperature. So in this case, T would be equal to 2.90 times 10 to the minus 3 Kelvin meters divided by 5.0 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. The meters will cancel. And we end up with a temperature of 5800 K. And that's the temperature of our sun. So real simple uh, upshot of this whole relationship in Wine's Law between temperature and the peak wavelength. And realize that all the stars are giving off all the wavelengths. All wavelengths are being given off. Even for the 3,000 degree star, it is giving off some ultraviolet and some of the other forms of light just in very, very small quantities. So small that they can't show up on this graph. So all the forms of light are being released, but there's a peak one particular one, and one thing you'll notice as the temperature gets hotter and hotter is how sharp that peak becomes. That really dominates. Down here, there's kind of a broad area where a lot of each of these different colors are being given off. But when we get to the really hot stars, we find that peak is very sharp. It gets very, very narrow. For us, you can imagine our temperature being at only about 300 degrees Kelvin, right? So ours, actually, we give off virtually no visible light, and our peak is somewhere way down here, um, way out of the infrared portion of the spectrum, and we're just a little blip. We wouldn't even be able to show up on this graph because our intensity would be less than, way less than, than 50.